next part that we need to deal with is how the electrons are scattered and in what order within a level and a sublevel. So this is going to involve the last two quantum numbers that we dealt with. Now, refresh your memory, we said there are four quantum numbers, N, L, M, and S. N represents the principal quantum number, which describes the size of the level. The bigger the number, the bigger the size. L describes the shape of the orbital that the electron is in, or the path that the electron is in. Those numbers um, are uh, represent zero, four spheres, one, which we call S electrons. Uh, one is uh, three-dimensional figure eight paths, or dumbbell-shaped paths, and um, those are called P electrons. Two represents the, um, the clover leaf shaped paths uh, that are stuck between axes. And uh, those are called D electrons. And the last one that we have found has been level or L equals three, which is the um, weird shaped one, as I call them, because they, they change according to the interactions with protons in the nucleus. And we call those F electrons. So, and uh, the, remember, the S electrons are found in the first two columns on the left. The P electrons are found in six, like six columns. So the S's are here, the P's are here, the D's are in the middle of the one row late. And the F's are at the bottom here in the two rows. So, but now we're going to look at how the electrons are distributed. Um, and we're going to talk about how the energy that takes to uh, put them into their position gets higher, higher, and higher. So, so let's take a look at this. Um, now that we've reviewed that. The M quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number, and that represents the, um, the number of paths, the number of orbitals of a particular shape. Now, numerically speaking, we call these values uh, uh, negative L through zero through positive L. And what that means is this, that if L is 2, that means then that M can equal, and it can means it's possible, but not necessarily going to be that way, um, anywhere from negative L through zero through positive L. So that means it can equal negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Now, let's refresh our memory here. When we say that L equals two, those are the electrons. And D electrons are found in this middle 10 area. Well, how many columns do we have in the middle 10 area? We have, well, I just said it like a bajillion times, 10 columns representing the 10 highest energy electrons of each of those elements found in that area. So, that brings up the next point, and that is the S quantum number. And the S quantum number, S stands for spin, so the spin quantum number describes how the electrons are traveling within the path, meaning you're going to have one spinning in one direction, the other spinning in the other direction, and they're always going to be counted to each other because they are both negative. They don't like being close to each other. So that means then there are going to be two electrons per half or per orbital. So that means then there's going to be two electrons in the negative two path. Now this, this is the first energy um, clover leaf. This is the second energy clover leaf. This is the third, fourth, and fifth. Now in theory, what is happening here 
is that we're going to have two electrons for each one, and that's how we're going to place them. Now, technically, that's not exactly how it works in the, in the real life of moving electrons around, and we're going to talk about that later on. But for right now, we're just going to stick this pattern because it's easy to remember. We're taking to start dealing with uh, quantum numbers together as a group of four, which is also later. But that means we're going to have two electrons in the lowest path, two electrons in the next path, two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, for a total of 10 electrons. And that's why this is there. Okay, so very quickly go over the others besides that, just so you can see how this is going to work. If if n equals 1, that means that L can only be 0. That's the first level sphere. And remember, when we said that m is negative L through 0 through positive L, well, that's the case then. m is 0 through 0 through 0, which is 0. So it's just one sphere in each level. Every time you get to start over, you start with a sphere, as we showed in the previous video, you're going to have one sphere starting off with two electrons in it. And then it goes from that. So that's why, that's why mathematically this works out. And then S can be either uh, negative one half, because we always go with the lowest number first, and we'll talk about why and all that later on, but these are the rules that are being set down, or positive one half. The S equals negative one half is the first electron in, a, in an orbital, and this is the second electron in an orbital. And then you move on to the next orbit. So this is the lowest energy and this is the highest energy, or the lower energy to be grammatically correct, and the higher energy electron of the pair. Okay? Now, when n equals 2, that means L can equal either 0 or 1. Well, we already discussed what happened, and this occurs first, because it's the lower number. This is the sphere, which we just talked about right up here. And this one right here, and the for S electrons. This is the three-dimensional figure 8 path, or orbital, which I abbreviated 3DF8. And these are the P electrons. Now let's focus on this. We already know what happens here, so let's focus on this. So when L equals 1, then M can equal, don't put that in there, M can equal, uh, negative m, which is or negative l, which is negative 1 through 0 through positive 1. And so there are three three-dimensional figure eight shaped paths. And two electrons in each one, for a total of six electrons, two electrons each, for a total of six electrons. And we know that to be true because the six are on the right-hand side. And the same thing happens down here. When L equals 4, or as the lowest possible value here for this scenario, we know that, uh, I'm sorry, not L, M equals 4, we get to the fourth level, then we have four options, because the biggest number that L could be is 1 less than N, so it can be any one of these right here. Well, we already talked about these three, so now we're going to talk about this. And this is the sphere, again. This is the uh, three-dimensional figure eight. Uh, we call these S electrons. These are P electrons. This is the clover leaf. And um, these are called D electrons. And like you said, there's a tendon. And then this represents the weird shape path. And we call these F electrons. Now, when L, well, when L equals 3, then M can equal negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, Two and three. Seven paths. This is the lowest energy path. This is the highest energy path. And there's two electrons in each one. 
those seven calves, those seven orbitals, times two electrons per calf or orbital, gives us 14 electrons. And that's why we have 14 elements down here, or 14 columns of elements in the bottom two rows. Okay? Now, that means that, let's just focus on, on the M now, since we're at that point right here. And remember, lanthanum actinium, some of you may have periodic charts, we have these holes right here, you fill it up with the lanthanum actinium. And we're going to focus on these four key right now. The first two electrons, one and two, are going to be found right here. So this is going to have electron number one and two. This is going to have electron number three and four. This is going to have electron number five and six, and so on, all the way up to this one right here, which is going to have number 13, number 14. Now, the, the first ones will have the lowest energy to be placed into those paths. The 14th will have the highest, and everything else will follow that hierarchy. Okay? And we, can, and we can see that right here. Cerium will have the first one. Um, Promethium, or I'm sorry, um, Chrysodymium will have the second one. Uh, Neodymium, the third. Um, Promethium, the fourth. And we keep going up higher and higher and higher to the energy 